Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see the demonstration of a new program which converts a simple 2D model and assemble it into a complete 3D with all the components. So this is the particular tool and we have several modules of it. So like uh, it can create a wind column, it can do translational repeat, it can add structure to your model and similarly the bracings. Then like uh, the wind load. Why specifically wind load? In the sense like uh, wind load is the most time consuming load to apply for a huge structure. That's why like I created a separate module for wind load alone and the design parameters. And this will be helpful to apply design parameters for multiple members in a fastest way. So moving on to the demonstration, uh, this is a simple 2D frame. Any engineer like uh, when they start a particular project, initially they will prepare one 2D stat model. From that, like they would extract the weight, they see the deflection and they could get the look and feel of a structure. Without that, it is hard to understand a structure properly. So once we are moving on to the detailing stage, detailed design stage, we require a complete 3D stat model. And obviously like it is going to take around minimum of 45 minutes to one hour to prepare a stat model, 3D stat model from this 2D one. Considered like uh, we have optimized everything in a 2D, it might take a minimum of 45 minutes to one hour. And if the model is like huge, then ultimately it is going to take days. With this particular program, like we can do that particular task in minutes. Let me get into the demonstration. So whenever we create or convert a 2D model to 3D, the first thing we do is like we create a wind column. It is because like we want where our wind columns will be connecting at the top because we want that nodes for creating bracings and statues, right? So similarly, we are going to create a wind column here first. Say my wind column spacing is six, no, sorry, three at six, nine, seven, five. And my Z position of this particular frame is zero. My base level is here like you can uh, change the wind column base height say minus 500 mm from FFL or plus 1.2 meter from FFL like that. Here I'm going to use minus 500 mm. Uh, then for profile type you have three options. You can choose hot roll section based on these libraries you can provide a section name over here or like built up straight and built up tapered. For this like I'm going to use a built up straight and I'm going to provide the start depth as 262 which is web depth plus top flange and bottom flange. Next 5, next 262, 156, yeah that's fine. And each time before adding any component to the model like you have to update the structure. So all these modules will be having an update button at the bottom. Before adding anything, please do update. First I update the structure. Then I add my wind column. Yeah, that's fine. Next, moving on to the translational repeat. So my base basings would be 7,500, 5 at 8,000 and 7,500. So like my first and last pay would be 7,500 and the intermediate base are 8,000 meter, 8,000 mm. So like uh, before selecting, I will update the structure. Then I will select what are the components which I want to trans to translational repeat. Yeah, these are the components. I just pick those things, then perform translation. Yeah, it is done. Now, like we have to add uh, same wind columns at the end as well, right? So I'm going back to wind column module here. Same minus 500 instead of build up. Now I'm going to provide a hot roll section. Say in the end. ISMB 250. Yeah, that's fine. Before adding, I just update. We forgot to put the Z position. The Z position of the last frame is, I think, 55 meter. Yeah, it is 55 meter. So 55,000. Uh, let us update. Then let's add. Yeah, that's fine. We got our wind column here as well. So it is ISMB 250, and you could see the columns were oriented 90 degree to the mainframe. That's fine. We have our wind columns now. All we have to do is like next uh, this strut tube. Uh, like it supports strata structure uh, strut tubes and uh, I'm going to provide 139.7 this section. 
So before doing the selection, let me update the model. All we have to do is like we have to select the nodes where we want the strut tubes to run. That's all. And going to the program, let me add strut tube. Yeah, strut tube is done. Next, moving on to the bracings. We have option for roof bracing on wall one, wall bracing. Roof bracing, obviously, like we are going to do with the diagonal pattern. So, like we have profiles here. We have uh, solid rounds as well as single and double angles, and then CHS sections. Say, for example, if this is my braced bay. Let me choose all the strut tubes along that way and then going over here like before selection you have to update sorry i forgot it let me update then let me select these members i'm going to provide a solid round of uh, 24 diana then add fine update the structure select the members now like uh let me add a double angle and roof bracings. Yes, that is fine. So we have double angles. Then the wall bracing. Update the structure. You see, wall for wall bracing, we have two options. See that like we can add a diagonal bracing or a portal bracing. Let us like add a portal bracing along this near side column and rod bracing on diagonal bracing on the far side. So for near side, since we are going to add a bracing in this position, these strut tubes will not be there, right? So I am deleting it. I will update the structure. Then portal bracing. Here it is asking for portal column and beam section. Say my portal column is 250 to 456 and 400 straight section as my beam. So all you have to do is like select the columns and then add a wall bracing yes it is done similarly here as well see that's easy so on the other side since we are going to provide a diagonal bracing so i'm going to add a say a sub section add wall bracing Add wall bracing. Yeah, we have completed our model nearly. So, like the modeling is nearly over. All we are pending is with like applying a wind load, then design parameters. Obviously, like you have to do the load combination creation and then uh, you have to optimize the frame. That is like your task. For the modeling, the model is complete, right? So, with this tool, you can add these four components whenever you want. Say, for example, you want bracing in this bay. So just go there, select the members. It is like say R24 before that update the structure. I forgot it, sorry. Select the members, add roof bracings. Yeah, it is done. So, like uh, for wind load, for application of wind load, all you have to do is like you have to paste the wind load coefficients here. You have a starting wind load number, you have to go and check here what is the start wind load number here then you have to put that number over here it is three and say i'm going to apply loads for these three members it is end wall column one whatever coefficient which we are going to provide in this end wall column it is going to calculate load for these coefficients based on the pressure and tributary area and it will apply on these load combinations primary loads over here right Say I have uh, for the purpose of simplicity, I just copy one every for all the coefficients and pressure one. Say my tributary area is 10, that is fine, right? So, for these columns, before selecting them, let me update the structure, let me select them, then add window. Yeah, window is created. You want to see updated. Then go, yeah, 10 is applied over here. Similarly, say this end, so it is end wall 2. And for to see the variation, let me apply a 5 mm tributary and add wind load. Yes, it is done. 
you could see the loads over here. So it is fine. So the wind load is applied. Similarly, if we have uh, different base spacings, say like 7.5, 6.5, 8.3 like that, if you want to apply a separate wind loads for each and every frame, or what you have to do is like you can collectively select these like the frame members. Say this is a near side column, right? So near side near side wall. Say these are my coefficients and these are my pressure. You just press update. It will add that particular load to the selected members. Yeah, like with this program, we can you can create a wind load for whatever members in your frame or like in your model, right? Then moving on to the last piece, the design parameters. Here, uh, you we are adding several members, right? We have to add design parameters for each and every member. For that, like you can select the members and mostly the most used parameters are provided over here, considering Indian and MBMA design. So my wind columns say KZ is one, LZ is 6.5, LY is three, LX is 3.6, then since it is Indian, it doesn't have UNT or UNB. My FY is 250, then the 410 I'll be made. It is uh, like I provided straight build up section over there. So STP2. Um, sorry, I didn't update a model. Update it, select them, choose to apply. The parameters are applied. You can go. Check it over here. Yes, simple now. Similarly, for these three members, I will change this to this to one and one point eight, one point five to see this uh, like variation. Yes, you can see the parameters are added over here. See right. So that's all for the demonstration of this video. Hope you like this program. If you know someone like who is really interested in these kind of stuff, please do refer him to me. Yeah, right? Thank you.